Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on how to make a chatbot. This is part seven. We're going to start wrapping things up. Now, in the last video, we obtained our results. We explored some methods uh, briefly on building it further, um, testing with the temperature. We saw some information regarding that. Now, we uh, basically have everything built in the main body of our chatbot through a recurrent, a recurrent neural net. Now, to go over some ideas with you that you will be able to take your project further, you know, maybe you could test it on running uh, more layers. We have a three layered recurrent neural net, so you can increase these and try and uh, run it to see if you can improve your results. You know, maybe you can train it for 50 epochs or 10 or increase your iteration. You know, these are, these are things that you're going to start seeing different results. You'll start working on fitting over, you don't want to overfit. But you're going to work on, you know, improving your accuracy. You can also, you know, add some new print statements, you know, to test it with, with other temperatures. For example, we could pass in this one, decrease it to 0.1. It's going to generate, you know, our 600 characters. But it's also going to decrease the diversity of the set. And it's going to train it with one epoch that is looking at each sequence of the input, input once. If you have other data points saved, you know, we've, we've generated our ID and our checkpoint path. You know, our, our run ID is going to be passed in through uh, the idea of Shakespeare. So you can always use it on other pre-chained data sets. This is just a, another quick idea. And also, you know, the way we set up with our print statements, you know, testing with the temperature, it allows us to uh, have some output in between each one, you know, as we decrease the temperature from one to a lower number. As you can see, we go from 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. It makes the uh, recurrent neural net our LSTM, it makes it more confident, but it also makes it a more conservative in its samples that it's going to output. So, you know, these are values that the more you build, you know, the more you make your chatbots and test your responses, the more accurate or the more tailored to what you want the chatbot to produce. So even as a, uh, another example, you know, don't mind this down here because I'm just I'm just adding this in. You could even, you know, create a simple uh, write statement. You know, create your file, your your new file that you want to write the sentences to. You can create. It doesn't have to be ten sentences. You can say, you know, I want to create a uh, hundred sentences, and you know, you want to pass in through your 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 iteration um, that's going to generate random sentences from our data set. So. You know, have your run ID, you want to generate your 600 characters, you know, again, with your temperature. These are just methods, you know, that you can use to further your chatbot. Once you have everything built, you can always look to, you know, to connect it online to start adding in further customization. And speaking of customization and taking this chatbot further, we successfully have our sequence to sequence generation model. You know, we're outputting text. Again, you know, we've discussed print statements. You can write it, you know, and save the files to use for later. But uh, I want to give you some ideas so you guys can take this project further because you're going to eventually want to pass in some, you know, interactive functions with your chatbot. So some ideas for you to look at, you know, would be to load your model and use it to create either something called a, a bag of words. You want to split it more into two types or two people, you know, person one and person two. You can also take a look at creating a bucket scale with a list of increasing numbers from zero to one. You're going to want to define an input and output feed, which will uh, allow you to dictate, you know, what, who, and what is speaking at the time. And I also recommend taking a look at these three articles in regards to taking your chatbot further. And as a last hint or suggestion on how to get your chatbot, you know, to successfully generate lines of Shakespeare, how to get it online, I would recommend taking a look at Flask. It's a great micro framework within Python that you can use. It's pretty easy to set up. I would take a look at the documentation, you know, just go to uh, the Flask website, take a look, you know, look to, to add your model, look to connect it, and you can successfully generate accurate lines of Shakespeare and integrate and build further. Now, it's been a pleasure to walk you through creating this RNN, LSTM, sequence to sequence for purposes of your chatbot usage. I hope you found it informational. I hope you enjoyed it. It would be a pleasure to see you take this further, to pass in your own data sets, and to see some new chatbots out there in the world. That being said, I'd like to wrap things up. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel so you stay up to date on the latest information. Keep your eyes out for a new series in the future. Who knows, maybe more chatbot updates will come where we'll pass in functionality. 
Keep experimenting, keep adding new things onto your project. And again, thanks for your time in this series. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.